So, this is a newish idea. Um, I have a friend who I video chat with when we're uh, just tooling around in our workshops. And uh, I'm usually... I'm usually just like taking stuff apart, old junk and things, and I call it doing autopsies. Just to see what makes them tick and why they broke and fixing what I can and just junking the rest. And my friend was telling me that uh, I should record some of this stuff and uh, post it to YouTube. Because why not? And it sounded like fun. So, give it a try. Here, uh, old combination lock that uh, my wife used to use to keep honest people honest at the gym. And... Um, doesn't work anymore. Don't know why. I mean, it's a master lock, so it's not exactly the highest quality thing. And I know there are like a million one ways to bypass these things, but eh, I've never had one apart. So let's try that. Uh, yeah. Autopsy time. I think this soft enough metal I should be able to just... Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, I can just... Take it off like that. What fun. Man, it just comes apart. <laughs> I'm not even squeezing that hard. It's like a like opening a can. It's this is this is easier than opening a can. Maybe this isn't terribly interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Who really cares? I'm having fun. Okay, so there's the back plate. Mechanism here. Oop. I've seen demonstrations of these things, like uh, models and stuff, but I've never really, I've really gotten it. So, <clears throat> how'd this go? That was, yeah, it was like this. Yeah, like that. And... I don't see anything immediately that looks like there was something wrong with it. Let's pull this lug out of here. Yeah. Don't know why it was getting stuck. Well, that was kind of anticlimactic. Maybe I'll try another one. I don't know. Not another master lock, obviously. Man, that was so easy to take apart. Like, I, I know master locks are kind of a meme, but I was not expecting it to be that easy. Jeez. All right. What else have I got laying around here? Found something. <laughs> you boy. <laughs> so this is an air compressor that's been in my dad's barn for, I don't know, probably the last 20 years or so. Um, it still turns on. I'm not going to demonstrate it because it's loud as hell. And also it just doesn't work very well. Uh, thing's ancient. Used to belong to my grandparents. It's... Ooh, it is filthy in there. Bit of a moth problem in the barn. So it's uh, got all kinds of dead larvae and things. Lovely. So that's what the shop light is for. Well, that wasn't terribly helpful. Ah, well, I tried. See, this might actually have some useful parts in it. I don't know for sure. Oh. Well, these holes just go straight through. Um, where are the screws? More well, importantly, where are my screwdrivers? Oh, yeah. Pop these rubber feet off. These used to have bristles on them. Because it would vibrate like nuts. No screws under there. Oh, 
right there. There and there. Don't think that holds it closed. Um, I don't know. Yeah, don't think that's original. Well, let's get these. Those are. Eh, nope, not big enough. Nope. No, because they're Phillips heads, dummy. There we go. Nice and easy. Some. Yeah. Get out of there. Saw the plastic flex. Ooh, whoa. Jeez, I guess that's it. Oh, there was another one up top. And that just broke right off. Oops. Oh well. Good news is I don't actually need this for anything. And it's busted and kind of a piece of junk. Eek. I think this was foam at one time. Oops. I think this was foam at one time, and that's not just moth junk. There is some moth junk in there, but I don't think that's what that is. Disconnect this hose here. So this is just going to get in the way. There. The hose barb. Yeah. I'm doing stuff like this. Oh, get away from yourself. There we go. All right. Well, that's not going to go through. So I should have just cut this off. Would have saved me a little time, I guess. Come on. Come on. There we go. There. And now I have a length of rubber hose. And this thing. This out of the way. <sighs> yeah, a lot of this stuff gets thrown away. I recycle what I can just because why not? Some bits are useful to me, others are not. Okay, so that's a diode. Huh, okay. I think I'm seeing how this works actually. It never occurred to me that they wouldn't just put a motor on a compressor. But seeing as there's just two big coils of wire in here and a power switch with a diode, is it possible they were just using the alternating current to suck a piston one way and the other? I think that might be what they were doing. That's kind of cool, actually. All right, so it looks like this... So I do need a flathead screwdriver. This holds the compressor assembly in place. Nifty. Ooh. 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 Did I mention the barn had a moth problem? <laughs> oh, that's gross. Uh, maybe this is why it wasn't working. Maybe this is why it stopped working. Well, I think this might have been foam at one time, too. And then was slowly replaced by moths. Ugh. Gross. 
Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that didn't actually hold anything in place, did it? No, it didn't. This is just, this just pulls out. Okay. All right. Well, now not only do I have a length of rubber hose, I am also going to have a janky power cord. Which I'm probably just going to cut the ends off and save for the wire. There they are. I'm interested in seeing how this works, but I have very little interest in uh, reviving this as a piece of equipment. I already have a compressor that actually works about as well as this one. I might have, uh, maybe I'll take that one apart too. <laughs> uh, string relief. I hate these string reliefs. I'll mess with that later. This is the interesting part. Yeah, so got neutral hot i guess or maybe neutral i'm i'm guessing it's neutral hot i'm not an electrician um but yeah there's a diode on this i'm not sure why it looks like this should just be a switch but with the alternating current it would push it through in one direction so this would activate on one phase and then just instead of getting pulled the other direction it would deactivate while this one gets activated i assume i assume that's how it works I'm trying to get a good look at this but yeah not the best lighting in here but yeah there's a A little perplexing. Let's get this off and uh, see what that does. Is that going to come? <laughs> nope. Diff. Angry, sharp pieces of metal. And they have nuts on them. God damn it. <sighs> okay. This calls for a specialist equipment. A cheap socket set. Believe it or not, I am a professional mechanic. Uh, not auto mechanic, but close enough. So I do actually have proper tools. Uh, they're just not with me. Or they are, and I just don't want to get them. Um, let's see. Is that a 10? No. Yeah. Is it a nine? There's a crescent wrench right there. Why don't I just use that? Because that would make too much sense, that's why. Not great about cleaning up my space either. That's that good click sound. Okay, I did record. <laughs> Got all this way and I uh, had the sudden sinking feeling that I forgot to hit record, but I did. So that's nice. Come on, you. Get on there. A nice click. That's the one. I live for that noise. Kind of nice little knock nuts. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we got an iron rod, or steel, I guess, but definitely been magnetized. Oh, okay, maybe they did use this as a motor. That's interesting. Huh, it's a snap ring holding that on. I don't have snap ring pliers, but I do have bent needle nose. And in a pinch, I can usually get those to work the same way. <laughs> in a pinch, pun. You, I just realized you probably can't see what's going on under there. The snap ring right there. I'm trying to get it with the pliers. I don't know how this is gonna work. I want to see what goes on in here. Is it doesn't turn. It's hollow. I think this is just a motor. I guess this is just some kind of big janky motor. More nuts. Let's take this apart further. See what we get. Ha. A good snap. Now, this is a situation where a socket wrench might actually be helpful. Uh, so, it wasn't a 10, it wasn't a 9. So, let's try 3 8s. This thing was probably made in the 70s, so of course it's not going to use a metric. I am not a uh, metric or freedom units purist, by the way. Not that anybody cares. I think both systems are equally good and equally easy to understand. I don't think either of them are better than the other in any particular way. They're just different. And I grew up in the 90s, and they always taught us that being different was okay. You know. I don't know where this came from. I just found it lying there. Oh, you know what? I think I saw it on here at some point. So it probably came off of that. Some decent hardware there. All right. There's that. Uh, yeah. So this thing fit down in here. And I'm not great at understanding... Um, AC motors, because I'm a simple brain. I'm trying to learn, but I'm still currently a simple brain. And uh, yeah, so this had this in the middle of it. But just keep it aligned. I bet this probably just kept it aligned. This went down over here. Yeah. Yeah, just a just a big motor. That's kind of cool. Wait a second. There's more happening down in there. Can't see it because I'm blocking the light. There you go. Those look like reed valves, which would make perfect sense because this is a compressor. So how did, whoa, that just popped off. Okay. 
All right, I've got that. So yeah, this is the compressor section. Way smaller than I thought it would be. But yeah, you can definitely see down in there. You got a couple of reed valves. These reed valves actually. Do an experimental poke. Whoa, yeah, it just goes right through there. So, poke, poke. I'll get a better tool for that. Experimental poke. Yep. Yeah. Just let air in. Hmm. Hmm. So that would suggest that this isn't a motor, or at least not one that spins this way, but one that goes this way. Oh! Oh, that makes sense. This is the piston. And... <laughs> yeah. So that's how it worked. Okay, so these, instead of going spinny spinny, went upy downy. Brilliant. So yeah, maybe my uh, hypothesis about the diode wasn't so far off. That's that's honestly that's kind of a clever mechanism. I like that. And this, I guess, was just oh, there's a spring in there. There's a spring in there. So they weren't energizing opposite each other. Okay. I understand how it works. So the diode just blocks one phase, so you only get energized and then off instead of positive voltage, negative voltage. Um, you just get positive voltage off, positive voltage off. So these are just getting energized on and off, on and off, over and over again, which is pulling the piston back and then releasing it over and over again, which is, which is doing this, which is operating the... Uh, the, the the compressor. In fact, these reed valves are leaking like mad. And that's probably why it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I could feel the... You can just feel the air coming out of there. Yeah. <sighs> so it possibly could have been fixed. I mean, probably can't now. Because I've had it apart. I mean, I suppose I could if I was very careful, but I don't think it's worth the effort. But what is worth the effort is the fact that I have a significantly newer Black & Decker uh, air compressor, which probably uses a very similar mechanism and probably has the same kind of problem because it doesn't build pressure very well. Now that I know how this works, I can fix that one. This is what I like being like about being out in the workshop. I learn stuff. And maybe if you're watching this, you learn something too. And it's more than likely completely useless knowledge that you'll never use for anything. But learning is learning. That's how I choose to see it anyway. No, no special clicks. No special clicks. Just crunchiness. Well, it's sure come off. There's like a membrane in there. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was trying to accomplish. Yeah, just look at these reed valves. Oh, there's... Oh, no, that was on the outside. Yeah. Maybe that's just because I was... I bent them in, but... I don't know. They were both leaking, and I didn't bend this one excessively like I did this one. So I think they were just... I wonder if they'd work better if I flipped them around. Maybe. 
Maybe that's information I can take for the bank. Take to the bank, is that expression. And by to the bank, I mean to the next air compressor I take apart. Well, this has all been very enlightening. Um, if you watched, I hope you enjoy. If you didn't watch, I hope you do. Or don't. I don't actually know or care that much. Um, I mean, if you are watching, I appreciate it. But if you're not, I'm not going to fuss myself over it. So you can't hear this anyway. All right, I'm going to stop this before it gets even stupider. Thanks.